Hey everyone, welcome to Kingdom Builder TV. I'm your host, Jay Heilman. Thank you so much for joining us today. And this interview you're about to see was actually supposed to take place in person in Lake Mary, Florida at the red carpet premiere of a brand new film from Real Works called Never Give Up. But of course, we have Hurricane Adalia moving through the state right now, so it's kind of uh, made everything more difficult. But I'm so glad that we're fortunate enough to have the real-life Brad Minns uh, with us today, along with producer Rick Eldridge. Guys, how are you doing this evening? Hey, we're doing great. It's going to be a great night. We're excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, so being a resident of Florida, you guys both know that our weather here in Florida is quite... Uh, unpredictable even if it says it's not going to hit us or something there's still always that chance that it just goes off track and just makes uh makes things difficult for us that's right well we're uh we're committed to this and we're excited to have a good crowd here with us well like i said you guys are at the premiere tonight over in lake mary just outside of orlando florida and uh rick let's start with you the film is called never give up it's going to yeah. be in select theaters on September 1st. Why don't you tell us a little sure. bit about this film and uh, how you got involved in it, getting it to the to the big screen? Well, Brad and I had a mutual friend who uh, you know, introduced me to his story with a book, a book of autobiography. And, uh, of course, I get a dozen books a week from people. Everybody has a story they want to tell. So, you know, I, I thought about it. I put it away. And then I met Brad. And meeting Brad made all the difference because... Uh, we were, uh, you know, I could see his charisma, the excitement that uh, in his voice and uh, such a, a dynamic guy that has so much to offer. And uh, after meeting him and hearing his story live, I just said, wow, we, we really need to let the world hear this story. And uh, it's a remarkable story of overcoming and coming back. Uh, it's, uh, first of all, you know, him personally dealing with the, uh, uh, the, the issues that he dealt with growing up. Uh, bullying, uh, having a you know, hearing loss at age three, all those kinds of things. But then on the tennis court, as he became a, a, a very, very good tennis player, uh, coming back uh, in what was probably the, the biggest come from behind victory on a tennis court ever at any level, uh, down two sets, five games, 40 love, and uh, came all the way back to win the gold medal in the uh, gold medal round of the World Games. So pretty phenomenal. And uh, it was a great story and, and, and something that I think uh, is inspirational and has a great message for everybody. Yeah, I agree. And I got a chance to see it, even though I wasn't able to be there tonight for the uh, yeah. Red Carpet premiere, I was able to see a screening of it. And it's a it's a very good movie. And, you know, anytime a faith based movie comes out, um, I get excited. But I especially get excited when you have uh, films that are based on real life. And with this one, right. not only is it based on real life. Not only is it, is it uh, based on like a real life person, but in, in Brad's case, uh, the thing that I thought was most remarkable about this is that it really highlights something uh, that, you know, a lot of films don't. And the fact that that Brad had lost his hearing by age three and he's gone through his life uh, not being able to hear. And I think that makes it much more remarkable because if it was just a tennis match, and it was uh, just, you know, yeah. like an Olympic tennis match between like like greats and stuff. That would be remarkable enough. But the right. fact that he was able to do this all while not being able to hear anything that's going around right. him makes the story that much more remarkable. And I'm, yeah. I'm really glad you guys brought this to the screen. And Brad is actually standing there right next to you. Yeah, he's right here. And my next my Come next question <laughs> my next my next question's for you Brad you know Brad when you first had this story go over to Rick what was it like seeing your story uh on a big screen what was it like seeing your story on the big screen oh it was amazing you just saw it on the big screen on uh national cinema day it was my first time ever being in a movie theater watching the movie open caption and to see this movie, um, Never Give Up, open caption in the big theater on the big screen, it was just amazing. The people in the theater were clapping, laughing, crying. They came up afterwards and they said they loved the movie. And it's just a blessing, a miracle, really, of how this whole thing came together. Now, did now did Rick and Rob do your story justice? Did they did they uh, did they do a good job? Did Harrison do a good job portraying you on film? Did Rick and Rob do a good job with the film? And did Harrison do a good job? Oh, my gosh. Oh. 
Did they ever? I'm telling everybody about Rick, Rob, and Harrison, the cast, the crew, the writing, the production team. I've never seen a more professional group of people in my life. And I was on the set for a month while they were filming at Lynchburg, Virginia, and I watched the whole thing. And uh, I was just so impressed with how everything was run. And so, so I don't, I'm speechless with the whole thing. Everybody did a great job. Well, that's good to hear. And, uh, you know, Rick, this question's for you. You know, the film has many up and coming stars in it. Uh, yeah. as well as veterans like Aaron Bethay. And uh, for our viewers, uh, you know, watching this interview, Aaron Bethay may be familiar to a lot of you uh, playing right. Kirk Cameron's wife in the movie Fireproof. Um, but you also have a, a cast that's rounded out by uh, actor Harrison Stone, Drew Waters, and actress N Nicole Ashley. Now, right. is it true, and I read this somewhere, is it true that, you know, Brad is Brad is is deaf in real life, but is it true that Harrison Stone is actually was is actually uh have have hearing difficulties as well? Uh Harrison actually acts like that, but no, not in his real life. Uh, there okay, are a couple so... other actors that do, like Ashley uh and uh, some of the others that uh, that okay. are hearing impaired. We had kind of a mixed cast. Uh, and uh, the the most remarkable, I think, to me too, Thomas Paraback, who uh, you you may know from Cobra Kai, uh, mm -hmm. in that series, Thomas played Brad at seven, and uh, he did a phenomenal job. Uh, he kind of uh, had a little speech impediment that matched everything, and uh, you know the 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 difficult thing as a producer on this one was we had to have four Brads, and all four Brads had to have the same look so that it would be convincing enough that. As they grew up, it would be the right guy, the same guy. Uh, they also had to play tennis at a very high level, even starting as a 14-year-old Brad, uh, because as a 14-year-old Brad in high school, Brad was knocking off his uh, number one college, you know, senior player on his team. So um, you know, it, it, was a, it was a film that guys needed to play at a pro level. And then you layer on top of that, we want great actors. And then you layer on top of that, we need to be able to match the convincingly deaf character that Brad is. And uh, it was a, it was tough to, to find four Brads that matched that. And we were very, very fortunate to do that. And of course, having Drew uh, come along, I worked with Drew on The Ultimate Life many years ago. And as Brad began to describe his dad, I'm thinking, well, that's Drew Waters. That's just, that's perfect for Drew. He was uh, kind of bigger than life, uh, you know, outspoken, fun, life of the party. And uh, so that was phenomenal. Uh, Harrison is a professional tennis player, uh, coach, and also an actor, and has just finished a series on Netflix. And so we were just really fortunate to come across those guys. Uh, Roland Evan also, who played kind of opposite Harrison, uh, also a great collegiate tennis player and a great actor. Uh, again, it was, a, it was a difficult task, but we were very fortunate to have who we had. Welcome to the 15th World Games of the Deaf. I'm Dan Court, along with tennis legend Stan Smith. I really thought newcomer Brad Minns would have a great shot against the reigning gold medalist. We're in the third set. Osborne is serving for the match. There are some unique rules for deaf tennis. You can't play with hearing aids. Which means they're playing in complete silence. Brad, my mixed doubles partner, I promise him this will be the best match you've ever seen. Mins has been deaf since age three, had a high fever as a child. I'm afraid it's not good news. Between 80 and 90 percent hearing loss. Osborne leaves, 40 love, five games to love, third set. Match point. Osborne, God, help me. Fifteen. Now you have to make some hard decisions. Most families choose sign language. I, I don't know what you're signing. Is there another option? Teach them to lip read, get a pair of high-end hearing aids. But institutionalization would probably be best. He's always going to be a deaf kid in a hearing world. We've made our decision. You're going to need to put him in the front row so that he can read your lips. Don't you think he should be at a deaf school? Oh, gotcha. Bradley Min, your disability doesn't entitle you to stare at the window when I am teaching. Yeah, the principal's office goes against the side of the bubble of the racket like that. That's too high, 
love you most. You want me to go easy on you, Brad? You want to win at tennis? Yes, sir, Mr. Davis. Then we're going to make you a champion. Well done, man. He can't hear you. I don't need him to hear. I need him to win. World Games for the deaf? What's that? Maybe you could play for Team USA. Do you really think I'm that good? Yes. How does a scholarship sound? Do you know what Room 213 is? What am I doing wrong? Why don't these people like me? They don't think you're deaf. Cool. Big kudos to the coach of Team USA, Mike Lapierre, on their training. I'm Bill Austin. You use Starkey hearing devices, right? Ever since I was a little kid. Can I fit you with some new high-end models we're testing? Men somehow returned it. This is a perfect example of why death tennis is more difficult than the kind of matches I play. I would have heard the ball hit the strings. Osborne didn't. Go! You have to be better than the best. In this match, anything can happen. This is a sport you can play. Yeah, not only you have great actors, but you had uh, Robert Luz as the, the director of the film. Um, what was it like working with him on that? Have you, had you worked with him prior to Never Give Up? Yes, Rob and, and I have done a couple things together over the years. And uh, the thing, uh, thing that really caught my eye about Rob is we were starting to talk about this story. Uh, I had met Rob a couple months before I met Brad in L.A. I mean, I've known Brad, Rob for years, but I met him for dinner there. And he said, why don't we meet at the tennis club? And I said, oh, great. I didn't know you were a tennis player. So we met at the tennis club. And then I find out not only is he a tennis player, but he's the senior champion at the uh, L.A. Tennis Club, which is one of the most prestigious clubs in America. And I'm thinking, OK, this guy's a great writer. He's a great director and he's a good tennis player. So, you know, who else to write this movie and direct this movie than somebody that understands the sport? So it was perfect for us and it worked out really, really well. And uh, so happy to have Brad on board. Or, Rob on board also, yeah. Well, the cool thing about this film is that, you know, it's it definitely highlights tennis. And my only claim to fame with tennis is um, I grew up, I grew up in Florida too. So I grew up in, uh, oh, yeah. over in West Central Florida in the Tampa area. And I remember growing up in a small town called Dade City. And Dade yeah. City was the home of uh, a national champion tennis player, uh, Jim Courier. And yes, got to got career. to meet him several years ago, and I actually played baseball yeah. with his younger brother. So that's my claim to fame in the tennis world. Is I I oh, met wow. Jim Courier and I played baseball with his younger brother Chris. So I thought that was there cool. So in closing, I'm yeah. gonna ask. We'll ask uh, Brad this question first. Um, so so Brad, when people go and see your story unfold out here on the movie screen, uh, what is the biggest thing that you want them to take away from it after they leave theaters? What's the biggest thing you want people to see, to come away with after seeing your movie at the theater? I want them to see that whether you're a tennis player or not, no matter what the score is in the tennis match or in life, no matter how far down you get, just whatever you're going to, that if you try out the guy and pray and ask him to help you, he will help you, he will be there. But you still have to keep doing what you do. You can't still have to keep fighting, keep playing, and my God is there with you and help you, and he will help you overcome all that adversity. So we want to give people hope. We want to encourage people to never give up. So the, the, the film being called Never Give Up, it's not just a clever title, huh? No, it's not. Uh, you know, the, one of the best lines in the movie for me, uh, when uh, when his mom and dad come up to him, and uh, and he has a, the, the reporter that's there with him, and he's just done a little interview soundbite for the reporter and uh and he says i can't believe it you know I, I came all the way back i won the gold and his mom says brad you've been coming back your whole life and uh, that's so true you know being bullied as a child dealing with so many different things uh, and we show that in the movie so uh, many people that face adversity that have been bullied that uh, have felt like they're not going to be able to stand up to what's going on in the world today. Uh, they'll be inspired by this because you can get, you can do it, and and that's that's such a thing. That three word prayer, and uh, we we've talked about that on that court when he was down, you know, two sets, five game, forty three love, and he says, "God help me." Those three words, uh, and he, and he came back. Yeah. He never gave up. So, uh, Amen. Fantastic. Well, that's that's amazing. Well. 
Rick, Brad, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us from the red carpet tonight. We appreciate yeah. it. We pray Rick, that the Lord can do big things with this film. And uh, Rick, where can people get more information about how to see this? And maybe if they want to get more information on the film itself where they see it, where could they get that from? Yeah, go to our website, uh, nevergiveupfilm.com. And if you do that, you'll be able to, to look at the trailer. You'll be able to put in your zip code, find theaters near you. Uh, anything. Uh, tickets are on sale right now, so uh, uh, we encourage you to go support it. That's the way these kind of movies continue to get made, is by people like you making a difference by uh, helping us out. Support it. Go see it. It's worth seeing. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We greatly appreciate it, and uh, good luck with the premiere tonight, guys. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless. All right.